Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. This episode is going to be a little bit different than usual. We are going to be talking about the project that you see behind me, our Guardian Farm base. We're going to talk about how this thing came to be and what its inspirations were because I've spent a long time on this project. It's actually been over the course of several months that I've been working on bringing the various things here together. And finally, we have got this build up to speed. If you didn't see the last episode, we built this central bit in a time lapse, and then I announced that that was basically as far as I had got. And of course, we've got more things to do with this project, like sorting out what's going to go in the space over here so that this area down below becomes entirely underground, and then it too will need some interesting shapes to decorate all of it. Now to start this journey off, what we're going to have to do is head all the way back to Season 4 of Hermitcraft where I also built a Guardian farm. So we're going to hop on through this portal and jump back in time to that world. Ah yes, this old place. Wow, Season 4. Talk about nostalgia. The Mesa, <laughs> the crazy clay roofs and of course the Guardian farm. The fire that you see around the edge of this build was actually part of a prank from Mumbo, but we decided to keep it. And down there you can see some gorgeous and interesting shapes. Let's go ahead and jump us into creative mode so we can hop up into the sky, fly around and look at this crazy build. Now the floor design was done by Ottomania. I found a plot of his that was very inspirational and that plot has once again become the source of inspiration for our current build. Let's jump down and see what's going on here though first of all. We have several different materials that kind of match each other in colour. We put glass over the top and then there is this depth that is created out of very interesting shapes. And if you never saw Season 4, well let me tell you that the Guardian farms are actually hidden behind here. Some of those visual glitches will show you that. The Guardians float down, there are traps underneath so that's why we have the Guardians up the top here. And then if I break this block there is more to see underneath. I have a whole storage area down here. There is this crazy build with lots of random blocks around the edges. And hey, if you want to go and see more of this from Season 4, you want to check out the epic episodes that I made. But yeah, this is a crazy project and it's really crazy to come back here again. So anyway, where, anyway bleh, where we need to head to next is Ottomania's plot on my plot world server. Look at this giant creepy eye. This is an Ottomania's plot, this is just next door. This one is Ottomania's plot and immediately you may identify some of the shapes, some of the things going on here that you have seen in the build on Hermitcraft. If we drop down to the ground first of all, from season 4 you may recognise this floor pattern. It was essentially uh, the same sort of design but built onto a bigger scale to fit inside of that area and we added glass as well. This right here is what features on our current base. So this building structure right here was taken out of this plot and put onto the Hermitcraft server. And then over here there are two other shapes that we have used so far that have been sort of exaggerated to be made a lot bigger. So this is one of them right here with Dark Prismarine. And the other one is this shape right here which we converted to Dark Prismarine and made a heck of a lot larger as well. So what I did is I come over here and basically was looking for inspiration with shapes and whatnot to put around this build to try and create something really different and unique. And if we take a moment here just to focus on some of the shapes and what's going on here, it looks very mathematical and calculated and really interesting to know how these things came to be. I actually had the pleasure of meeting up with Ottomania and we had a little discussion together and he showed me how he comes up with these shapes and the technique and the way to do this is so fascinating that I think if explained correctly pretty much anyone could get into doing things like this and I am now hoping that I can take the lessons he has taught me and apply them to finishing the rest of the builders as I love to get more shapes like this into the Hermitcraft world. Uh, but before we get into anything like that just yet, I'd like to show you a little bit of the creative process so far. We are now on my private plot world server for 1.13 where I have world edit and all of the 1.13 commands. And around here as we fly about you're just going to see some of the experimental stuff that was put together in order to create this guardian temple. This is actually where we first started with making weird shapes in our own way and not really getting too far. I don't know why we didn't go ahead with this one. I think I didn't particularly like the blockiness 
on the sides there but it was certainly an interesting experiment to start with as you can see over here there's actually something we might end up building on top so we can fly out of here like it's an exit and an entrance and we may also be able to go up to a secret room up in the sky where we can have some space to store some valuables but I'm not sure if I actually want to put that on top yet anyway as we head around you'll see these giant floating boxes all over the place with different iterations and ideas going on uh, some of the staff on the server helped me out with bringing their own ideas to this like decorating the walls this is when the walls were going to be made out of ice and I never liked how it looked with dark prismarine next to the ice so I changed it over to sandstone as you can see right there I believe there might be one or two other these boxes floating around that we messed about with but anyway it came down to this one right here and then we had to go through the painstaking task of turning all of this into half slabs so this one over here is actually shifted up by half a block everywhere when we get in close you can see that there are half slabs so if I simply try and place a block here it is like so and that's because when I was ready to go with this build over here and I was like right we're finally gonna do this I then realized that mobs would be spawning on these blocks if I didn't light them up I tried putting redstone on them buttons other things like that and it looked really ugly so I was gonna give up on the project and then we had the idea to use half slabs so what I hope to achieve in this video is tying up the space that's going to be below this big structure and the spaces leading up to the edge of the walls here. You can see I've had some ideas to do something that's flat and I also tried to make something a bit more three dimensional that didn't really work out. And then there's also been some experiments with scale that were a bit blown out of proportion. This original shape was far, far smaller and when I first tried to make it bigger, I went way too overboard. Look at how ginormous this is right here. But essentially what I was doing was just figuring out the pattern and recreating it over and over to scale it upwards to make this build rather large. So my friends, I'm going to attempt to give you a lesson like Ottomania gave me a lesson and after spending some time figuring out what it is I'm going to show you I realized that I haven't dived deep enough into this stuff yet to really get into it so we're going to start off with a couple of basic concepts and then as I try to work in shapes to this build over here I'm hoping I can show more of this in action now the way that Otter showed me his process was by starting off with a shape that being an octagon and a lot of what we're going to do here is going to be about shapes and patterns and manipulating them and on multiple dimensions as well because of course Minecraft is a three-dimensional game now that is supposed to be an octagon but as you can see it kind of looks a little bit like a, uh, a cube as well even though it sort of has one two three four five six seven eight sides it's really quite difficult to do an octagon in this game in that particular way but as Otter showed me if you change up um, the angles at which the different sides work together it can be possible to create an octagon that looks fairly reasonable and there you go that looks much more like an octagon but again depending on what angle you look at it it can look a little bit uh, like a square as well I, I can't quite remember the significance of this but it was used as an example to then look at the different lines that are coming through this build so we can continue that line there going in this direction and we can do the same thing again on the opposite side right that brings the blocks together like this so I will go and then repeat that on the other three sides and we'll knock this little example out of the way so with a little manipulation of one shape we have created another entirely new shape and this is essentially the process except it extends into three dimensions so Otter proposed a question to me can I make a perfect triangle in Minecraft? I think that might be the incorrect term for this type of triangle it might be equilateral where all the lengths of the three sides are the same length anyway the problem here is obvious we're in a two-dimensional space we're trying to make a three-sided shape but in this game we have three dimensions to work with and as soon as we use those three dimensions we can actually create a triangle where each of the sides are the exact same length so now we're working in a three-dimensional space and we need to apply similar rules of manipulation to this shape 
like we've done over there and I'm really not too experienced with this and had many different ideas but let's start off by filling in all the spaces where we place a block and it touches three sides on the other type of block and then on the opposite side it's going to be a little bit different some of them will be three and some of them are going to be two like so and then the last thing that we're going to do is place another type of block where it will only touch one side each time and already you can see what we're doing here we're starting with a basic shape and then we're applying rules and manipulation and we create a new shape from it and I think that's the last block yeah there you go and now we have created a whole new interesting shape out of that original one and then you can probably apply some more manipulation and with some cleverer rules for how you're going to change the blocks you may end up with something like this over here now we're going to start off with a simple challenge which is to fill in the spaces of our floating object and then once we've done that going all the way over to the walls then we can start to think about putting in some more abstract shapes so we're going to start off with some simple stuff right here on this side I've come and I've placed some blocks going downwards you'll notice though these are made out of slabs that is so that nothing can spawn on it and then I've continued to exaggerate the patterns of these shapes over here into the sides of them so we can have this come down and wrap around we're then going to do the same thing again with this one which might be a little bit trickier as the shape is almost perfectly diagonal but occasionally something different pops out so I've got to figure out what exactly is going on here and then just continue it down into the ground now on the opposite side I decided I would try this with stairs and at first I liked it but when you step back it adds a lot of extra lines in here and so I don't think we're going to use stair blocks just yet so this is the one that we're going to do and what I'm doing here is I'm just doing one corner of it because we've welded it I can create a selection then I can copy and rotate it and paste it on all sides so I'll show you that when we get to that step but first of all we just need to figure out this because we're dealing with slabs here it makes everything a little bit more complicated but essentially what we're looking at over here is just kind of a zigzag of blocks that go across like this right this is actually the exact same pattern that we were working with a second ago except the two of them sort of come to the middle here from either angle on the sides and meet so essentially it's the same as what's going on over here then while I was doing this all by hand which is what I've done up until this point I realized that I could copy a slice of this and paste it downwards rather easily so using weld edit I've been able to exaggerate the shape over here and now I think what I actually want to do is make this thing like a cone that goes around the entire build so it's going to meet up somewhere in this area with the one from the other side and then we'll be able to have a space here that goes all the way up to that wall with a dark prismarine that we can fill in and figure out in a moment but I also think what I'm going to do is make the slope at the bottom here a little less steep because we are really digging in to space down below so it's going to be interesting how this all ties together this also brings it pretty low by default over here right if I want it to touch that wall we've got to come all the way down to this height and then start building from around here so that's your chop off point so I got no idea what I'm going to do with this space but I'm definitely going to make it interesting so I placed many slabs in these corners trying to come up with a pattern and most of the things that I came up with were just a little bit dull like this right here you know it just repeats down into the corner it's too simple you might also be wondering why there's just regular slabs well it's because I would then have to go and place other slabs underneath it to do this so that mobs can't spawn on it so rather than fill it all in from the get-go I was just placing loads of slabs like this I went through many iterations it wasn't really working and I was fortunate enough to meet up with Otter again and we talked about how much time he's actually put into developing this skill which is one of those things when you see the end product of something you don't realize how much time it takes to learn this stuff and I am certainly learning that it is much harder than it looks even when you've got the person who does this sort of nudging you in the right direction so we went back over to Otter's plot to look for some inspiration and we found this shape right here which we then were able to tile another two times to create an even larger shape it was just fascinating you could probably tile that over and over again and use it for a crazy shapely build anyway we tried to incorporate it down here into the corner and although it looks interesting I don't think it was gonna work out it leaves too big of a gap at the bottom which means we send this deeper and deeper which I don't really want to do we tried other sorts of ideas as well in fact you can even see the remnants of something else that I tried that really didn't work out 
And then we decided just to settle on filling in this space with something simple and straightforward. So we took the curve that had been created over here and we figured out what pattern it was and then we decided to just move it gently backwards and upwards which I think is really appropriate for this part of the build. So what you'll see here is that we figured out the border pattern. It's two, then one, two, then one, two, then one and they meet over here. And we've actually overlaid these on the blocks in front of them so when you look from above you can see another pattern as well which is a group of four then a group of two group of four group of two and sometimes they merge in the middle slightly different so each time there is a middle point here the pattern is actually different for every single height which is another curiosity of working with shapes and forms like this but this is essentially what we're going to go ahead and do so I'm going to remove all of this stone I'm going to be placing the half slabs on the underside and then we'll get copied we'll get that copied into the main build on all sides so we want to have a like a, a before and after right so this is what I was currently going with and now this is what we have over here which looks far more interesting. Thanks to the magic of world edit, I have copied this corner and I can effectively rotate and paste it if I stand on the correct position, which should be this block right here at 148, yes. So we rotate by 90 and then we paste. Then we double check that everything is good. You can see it's come into place over here. And using chat's memory, we will rotate, paste, rotate, paste and we can see things happening on the underside down here. The underside is actually something we want to check out. Look at that. That's what it's going to feel like from the inside of the base. Or is it? Because I have plans for this area down here. But from outside it is now done on all sides and you know what? I'm actually really quite happy with the result here. But then I had a change of heart, you see, it felt like the sandstone wall was kind of on its own and I wanted to make this thing feel more like it was being held in place, so to speak, and changing this over to sandstone does that look. It really creates a, a better division and we leave all the prismarine on the inside. That's a much better balance, in my opinion. Right, so I will do the world edit magic and copy and paste this round to the other sides. Oh yes, oh yes, I think we can agree that is many, many times better than before. With the top side of the base taken care of, we now need to think about what appears down below. And we are standing inside of a giant sandstone box, which represents the size of the area we will have below that build that goes up top. So we can dig out a massive space below where the guardians spawn, and then we can put some sort of interesting build into this area. And I've actually had a vision of something that sounds a little bit odd when you try and describe it. It is of tubes or pipes that kind of curve in and out of the wall together. Very difficult to describe. It, it'll make more sense when you see it. But anyway, I'm placing some blocks right now. These blocks sort of represent the middle of where we're going to create a circle each time. We're going to create the same circle over and over again. And this should create a bulge-like shape at the front. So what I'm going to do is generate a circle. There we go. And our next block has gone missing. Huh. Hmm. That time it didn't make the next one go missing. How very odd. Anyway, I'm going to stand on top of each of these blocks and just generate from this central point a circle shape as you can see there it is and then when we come around to the front here you can kind of see what is like a, a bulge of a tubular like shape if you imagine there's a wall that kind of cuts this off at a certain point there we go something like that what I would then like to do is take this shape and find a way to tile it over and over again and use that with different wall colors so we have loads of pipes that kind of look like they flex out of the wall and then back in again. The problem is, I've already messed around with this and tried it, it's really difficult to tile a shape like this. So what I used was image editing software to create this tiled pattern right here. The pixels on this grid are the same as the shape that we have in our world and then what we can do is simply drag the pieces around and try them in different positions until we find something that we like that can be scaled and to do that we basically have to create a few gaps here and there. This process is known as tessellating where you take a shape and then you turn it into a mosaic or a pattern by repeating it and I think we can all agree it doesn't look very good. It was just an idea in the mind and this is how you come up with things, right? You experiment. 
Another reason that we're using wall here, which is quite colourful, and I think that's playing a role on how good or bad this looks, is because we can put carpets of the same colour on top. I'm absolutely sick of trying to build shapes using slabs that are offset by half a block. But it may just be a good idea to keep going with that because these materials don't look so good. So what will actually go in this space? I do not know. It's going to take time, it's going to take experimenting, and our first experiment didn't work out so well. So now we're going to do a couple more. I'm going to generate a circle from this block right here, and then the next one I'm going to go up and in that direction then by one, then up and back. And we're going to kind of create like a wiggly cylinder shape going upwards. Alright, so let's check that out. You know, that's moderately interesting, and the idea is to just keep doing things like this until you find something that really works. In fact, I really like this shape that's appearing here. There is certainly some sort of charm to this. Maybe a cut of this could go in the corner. Again, I kind of picture this being tiled, like if you just look at the first few blocks that come out, have that as a repeating pattern going across the wall. So we're experimenting with another pattern. You can see it right there in the middle. And then when we go to the outside, it's not quite as thick, but again, hmm, that one's actually not really that interesting. And so from this point forward, in between making Hermitcraft episodes, I am going to be coming into this room and experimenting with all sorts of different ideas. And I think when I have some good results that's when I'll share things with you again next. My plan was to you know do this in this episode to give you an idea of the creative process and then when we actually get something good I'll show you exactly how we got there. But with all of that said what we will be doing very soon on Hermitcraft is building this base down here and the area that we were just in is what goes below here. And as you can imagine, we probably need some sort of way to transition from one theme to another. And I think my idea of using wall blocks down here wouldn't really suit what you're going to see when you look upwards. So chances are we're probably going to continue with the prismarine blocks. So my friends, I hope you were entertained by this episode. I wanted to do something very different, give you a insight to the creative process. And I'm going to have no time at all now to actually do anything on the server. But I really do hope you have enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like. As always, thank you for your support on the series. And I'll be seeing you soon with another episode of Hermitcraft. Bye-bye.